was going on YouTube prepared wanderer back in the woods and I've got a really cool video I want to sh share with you guys today we're gonna be going over deer hunting pack and gear from the beginners perspective so stick around it's gonna be a pretty interesting video a lot of cool stuff to look at and uh, hopefully we'll learn something together so stay tuned all right so <clears throat> About three or four months ago, had some major life changes, uh, and things are starting to settle down. I'm in a new place, and back then, at the beginning of the year, I kind of made a decision that I was going to put a concerted effort into getting out in the field and hunting more, and uh, particularly doing deer hunting. Now, my background in hunting... Um, is not with deer hunting. I, I actually have never hunted deer um, as, a, as a young person. I grew up in Iowa hunting pheasant and squirrel and quail and spent years and years doing that with my family, my father in particular. And we, man, we shot a lot of pheasant back in the 80s, um, late 70s, early 90s, and uh, had a blast doing it, a lot of fun, a lot of great eating, and that's just the way I grew up, is every, every hunting season going out with my cousins and, and hunting the fields, uh, hunting pheasant and rabbit and quail, and it was very productive, and I learned a lot. <clears throat> Fast forward, got married, had kids, and hunting became kind of uh, not an important thing to me because I just had so much going on. So fast forward to this year, and you know, I decided that I'm gonna do this. I am going to go out and I'm gonna deer hunt, and I'm gonna put effort into it. I'm going to take time to figure out the right equipment and gear. I'm going to go out and scout. I'm gonna sight in uh, my gun. I purchased a rifle, um, and uh, I've got actually uh, I'm going to be hunting in two different states. I'm going to be hunting in Pennsylvania and Ohio. So this is something that I really want to do. Uh, I'm looking forward to it and uh, I'm, I'm passionate about it. So what I want to do is I want to show you some of the gear and equipment that I've been putting together for my deer hunting season this year. Now you got to remember this is from the beginner's perspective. So there are things in here that you're going to look at if you're an experienced hunter and go, the, no, that's not, you don't need that or I would never carry that and feel free to post that information in the comments because I'm looking for feedback but this is what I put together based on where I hunt which is the Midwest Ohio Pennsylvania this is not backpack hunting out west for elk <clears throat> where I'm hiking miles and miles and miles and glassing you know across big canyons this isn't that's not this this is you know, eastern woodland hunting at its best. So let's put down the pack, let's open it up, let's talk about the gear and show you what I'm thinking and hopefully you guys got some feedback for me. So let's look at it. So right off the bat, I've got binoculars and um, these are the Vortex um, Crossfire HDs. These are the eight by 42s. I didn't think I needed anything bigger because, I, like I said, I'm in Ohio. Uh, I'm not doing a lot of long-range reconnaissance with these things. I need to see across maybe a gully or something into the woods. So I thought that this size would be perfect. They're not too terribly heavy and large. They were affordable. Um, you know, they, they were um, under $140 and they came with the chest harness the bag to hold them so I thought that was a good deal I like vortex optics I've used it in a lot of my guns um, and I've always enjoyed them always thought they've been you know pretty well made so we'll see how they do this season there the these binoculars are definitely awesome from what I can tell from a little bit that I've used them very clear um, very easy to operate they're very smooth in in the focus um, and the little rig that they came with, this pouch, is nice. It's perfect. It's all you need. Um, it's not overly elaborate. 
So the Vortex was my choice for optics. I thought it was a good deal because it came with the case, the harness, and I, I like Vortex optics, like I said, so that's my choice. So now let's take a look at the pack because I think that's really a big, important thing that uh, took a lot of thought, actually. So the backpack is the next big piece of gear that I had to make a decision on. And, um, you know, if you watch my videos, you know that I have a lot of backpacks. I've reviewed a lot. Um, I love packs. I love gear. <sighs> Probably have a little bit of a problem with it, but well, whatever. So <clears throat> I really wanted to think about uh, what kind of backpack I could take out for hunting, particularly deer hunting. Um, I wanted something that uh, was lightweight, wasn't too big, uh, carried enough water for a day, and had some organization to it and was easy to get into, um, and also quiet. And I think that was another important feature I had to think about too. A lot of the backpacks that are on the market for hunting um, are not that well organized, they're not that easy to get into. Um, I felt that was important because if you're out hunting, and especially if you're doing stalking style of hunting where you're walking a lot and you have to get in your pack to get things in and out, you need to be able to get in and out quickly and quietly. So that was a consideration. And lo and behold, I saw something on Instagram from Eberly Stock and it kind of triggered uh, a thought that like oh yeah they have some really cool stuff and i remembered a pack that i've had some experience with which was the h1 or h31 bandit uh, the everly stock bandit so i checked it out did some online sleuthing read some reviews and i found one so the Everly Stock Bandit is kind of unique in that it, uh, the way it opens up and the way it's organized. Uh, it's a clamshell design. And when you open it, the whole thing opens up to reveal the contents of your bag. And then along the sides, there are organizational pouches. Of course, there's a hydration pouch in the back. Um, it's just really easy to get into. And if you undo these side straps, which um, opens up this panel, which has molly, laser cut molly on it, this whole thing will open up and flay out. So it's, it's uh, a really awesome design. Now there's a lot of companies that are starting to do this with their packs. I think Everly Stock has done a really good job with this and um, has perfected it, at least for this application of a hunting day pack. It's perfect for me. I love this thing that I can open it up like this. So uh, taking out the contents, I've got uh, a, an orange safety vest. This Now this vest that I have in here is not for wearing, it's actually for attaching to my pack since the pack is camo. Um, I've got a knife. This is the SE4 with the 3D handles. We'll talk about this a little bit later on. I've got some Tough Possum gear pouches. Talk about that in a little bit with the contents. Map case. So let's open this up here so you can see this organization. We've got slotted pockets with elastic at the top on the side up here so I've got a flashlight I've got a, a buck knife I got nothing in this in this slot and then down below down here you see that is another pouch with elastic on this side I'm trying to figure out here how to show you this to you guys on this side there's a large pocket that runs kind of the length of the side that has this elastic at the top so the contents stay in. Then of course the back has the hydration pocket which has a um, clip that clips into uh, specifically the source 3 liter bladder. This is what Everly Stock recommends and sells with their packs. Um, it doesn't come with the pack but you can order this uh, to go with it and it fits in this pocket perfectly and this little clip goes into the handle nicely Source makes a great hydration bladder. I've used them before Especially in search and rescue 
love them uh, they're military grade really good stuff so that's the inside of the pack now the lid or the, the front of this pack uh, has kind of a soft uh, fleecy material um, so I think you'd be able to easily attach some velcro pockets in here if you wanted to I didn't want to do that I don't want to add the extra weight um, it's not necessary I rather have pull-out pockets that I can uh, get into a little bit easier but that's an option for you so <clears throat> zip this back up Now you notice on the front here we've got the Everly Stock logo. There's a Velcro panel for your patch. And like I mentioned before, we have this uh, kind of beaver tail flap uh, that has Molly laser cut into it. So if you want to attach an additional pouch, you have that ability. Um, once again, I didn't want a lot of extra stuff on the outside of my pack, so I'm not putting anything back there. Side pockets that are actually big enough to hold a canteen or even a large 32 ounce Nalgene, round Nalgene. Awesome. A lot of pack companies miss this feature. They put too small of a side pouch for water bottles um, and then to me that's useless. Especially for hiking and hunting you want something that's going to hold big water bottles. I like to have a canteen with me. This holds it perfectly. Other side same thing. There's also if you can see this, there's these Molly loops, not traditional Molly like you normally see in military packs, but just kind of a, a nylon or webbing loop. But you still have that ability to attach uh, pouches to it, which is awesome. <clears throat> Top of the pack, there is more of this webbing, but with a uh, shock cord, so you can you know stuff something in there. And then there is a top pocket that opens up. And it has key keeper, uh, which in here I have a whistle and a little signal mirror attached. Um, it's not terribly huge, but I've got a small first aid kit and some wipes. See that? Um, a little zipper pocket right here, uh, which I've got just some chapstick in there. And then this kind of... <clears throat> I don't know, this odd pocket that I don't really quite know what to do with. It's maybe big enough for a multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife, but it's not big enough for a phone. It's not big enough for a radio, so it really doesn't serve much of a purpose for me. I would have just, I would have liked them just to leave that out and make this zipper pocket bigger, but that's me. No big deal, just don't use it zip that up and now we get into the really awesome feature of this pack which is the the harness so many day packs um, are not comfortable they they have very unsophisticated I guess I could say harness systems and um, I want something that's gonna be comfortable that I can wear all day long and this thing delivers uh, hiking around out in the woods today it has been very comfortable with the loadout that i have uh, the pack is like 935 cubic inches so it's not terribly huge but it, you still need some good support and um, it has very nice padded straps and then as you can see there are these kind of 3d channels that are built in that really get this thing uh, off of your back so there's some ventilation some real ventilation a lot of these packs uh, you know they they put material on the back and they say well it's for ventilation but it's still against your back so it doesn't really ventilate it, it's ridiculous this actually ventilates because there is a channel that the air can pass between your back and the pack um, also the harness is adjustable to your torso length so there are Looks like three or four different levels that this thing can go. I've got it maxed out. I'm six foot one, and it fits me perfectly. Uh, if you're a little bit shorter, uh, you'll have the ability to, to shorten this. If you're a little bit taller, I don't know how well it'll fit. I'm assuming it'll fit fine. Um, there is the ability to add a belt. So there's a pass-through pocket here with Velcro inside there. So one of the Everly Stock belts will go right in there and fit. 
if you need a belt I don't need a belt I want to be able to access the pack quickly and get it off quickly um, plus I'm not carrying that heavy of a load that I need a belt to stabilize or to take weight off uh, <clears throat> another great feature on this pack um, is the camouflage and um, it is I mean, I'm kind of a camouflage nut. I love camouflage. This stuff is really cool. This is Everly Stock's Doppelganger Mountain. Um, has a lot of green in it, a lot of black, and a little bit of tan. So the camouflage is just—it's really unique. Um, it's—it's it's very cool. It—it it seems like it does a good job blending into these woods. <clears throat> in fall, um, you know, maybe probably want a little bit more red and brown, but. I found this pack online second hand. This is actually a used pack, even though it's it's brand new. I don't think it's ever been used. I got a good price on it, um, so I bought it. Um, and this is the camel that it was, and I thought that'll be fine. I'll, it'll it'll work. And uh, the material in this pack is kind of a suede, soft material, but it's not overly fuzzy, so it's not going to pick up a lot of burrs and uh, stuff like that. Um, I went through some brush today and it seemed to do fine. It didn't snag or anything or, or pick up anything. But it is a soft material, so that is a good consideration if you're worried about you know your gear being quiet. <clears throat> and I think this will work. So uh, pack also has uh, webbing on the bottom. You can see that, which is a nice feature. If you case you want to roll something up, stick that under there. So overall just a really nice bag um, and it comes in a lot of colors a lot of camo all right <clears throat> so gear well i showed you some of the gear that i pulled out of here got a map case so i'm going to be updating that with maps of the area like i said i'm hunting in two different places this year two different states so i'm going to need to get detailed maps for each of these areas in ohio i'll be hunting on public hunting land in Pennsylvania, I'll be hunting in uh, national forests, so maps are going to be critical uh, to knowing the area and being able to navigate and figure out where I'm at. So, nice lightweight map case. This is by Equinox. I'm not sure of what you're doing. <clears throat> Second thing I pulled out was this hunting vest. So my thought is that if I need to attach this to my pack uh, to help meet regulation with hunting laws because I have to have a hunting uh, orange at least in Pennsylvania I have to have or, uh, an orange vest on <clears throat> if I'm wearing the pack all day the the vest is going to be obscured but if I run this vest uh, through the panel I'll have it I'll have some orange on me on the on the back <clears throat> so that's my thought so I want to try that um, Maybe get a pack cover, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't found one yet that I like or that I've, I've really been able to find one that's a good pack cover that would be orange. But that's the thought on that. And then um, this is really the main part of my gear is I have these two different pouches. These are from Tough Possum Gear. And I think these are the uh, 8x10s or 10x12s, something like that. Um, <clears throat> really a great guy to get stuff from but I like that they were in the hunter orange so that they're easily seen but I have two different pouches and they both have specific purposes this pouch is I guess what I would consider the kill pouch so after I make a kill this is the pouch I'm gonna grab and utilize because in here I have I bought a deer drag I wrap that around neck or the horns or legs and able to pull that a little bit so uh, it's orange it's also got some reflective uh, material on it I've got the Gerber uh, zip tool we know what that's for that's for processing the deer Never used it, so I don't know how well it's going to do, but I'm going to try it out. It uh, seemed like it was uh, a pretty decent idea. It's got replaceable blades that it comes with, um, so I'm going to try that. <clears throat> I've got a couple 
field dressing kits. This one's from Hunter Specialties. Uh, this has a uh, heart and liver bag, moist towelettes, uh, shoulder length gloves, and wrist length gloves in it. And then this uh, is a set of Guardian gloves. Uh, three pairs of disposable nitro gloves and three pairs of shoulder length gloves. So I've got plenty of gloves. And I've got my wipes and my other kit for cleanup. So this is the kill kit. Uh, this is pretty much what I'm going to need to process the deer uh, besides my tag that I have to put on. Um, I think for Pennsylvania, Ohio, I'm not sure about yet. I have to check the laws. But that's the kill kit. This bag is what I would consider a possible's pouch. <clears throat> so in here I've got some fire starting cubes. I've got a butane lighter. A headlamp with a red light. I've got uh, my match safe with waterproof matches. 550 cord. Another lighter. A ferro rod, which I may or may not keep. I may do, I might take that out. I don't know. And then some gorilla tape just for some repairs in case something happens to an optic or my boots I don't know I, I, I like to be prepared with stuff so it's not terribly large as far as the amount of stuff I'm bringing for that for uh, for emergency uses uh, but I think this will definitely get me by uh, of course uh, on the outside I've got a canteen this is the Nalgene Oasis love these things um, knife so couple of things to uh, talk about with knives. <clears throat> I, I really kind of mulled over what I'm going to do with a knife, what kind of knife I'm going to bring to clean and, and process my deer. Um, I know that you don't need a huge knife to do that. I've, you know, I've, I've been reading articles about it, seeing what other people do. And I understand that with deer you don't need a huge knife. So I think a lot of the processing is probably going to be done by this buck. Uh, I think this is the 110 Featherlight or Lightweight, I think they call it. A really nice little knife. Super sharp, uh, right out of the box. Um, so I think that's going to be a lot of the processing going to be done with that. But I wanted a knife that was a little bit more heavy duty, and of course I wanted a fixed blade. Um, I'm a knife guy, I had to have a fixed blade in my pack. And uh, I decided on the SE4 because I know I can clean a deer with this thing, but I also can process wood. I can do other tasks with it. So to me, it's a more of a general camp knife. It may be more of a backup than anything. And uh, I wanted uh, SE because they make fantastic blades. And this is a great knife. It's the 4 with the 3D handle. So it's got the uh, more shape to it. It's not as flat as the normal handle that comes on the four. Very comfortable knife. Super sharp. Great heat treat. Can't beat it. And I wanted a Kydex sheath. I didn't want a leather sheath. So I don't want it to rot and get bloody and gross. Uh, this way I can clean this thing off easily. So that's, that's the, the knife selections along with that Gerber tool. I think I've got my bases covered. I don't know. We'll see. Uh... <clears throat> here I've got a Bushnell flashlight. This actually has the white light, red light, and the purple light for blood tracking. So I thought that might be good to have to, to do tracking in case uh, I have to do that in the, in, the, in the morning or the evening. Who knows? I had this flashlight for quite a while so I thought why not? I'll throw it in the pack and we'll see how that, if that's useful. Um, of course the bladder and then last but not least I've got uh, some some calls I've got of course rattling sticks I think these are Primos and then I've got um, this grunt tube
Now, I don't have a lot of experience calling deer. Did you hear that gunshot in the back? We're out in public land, so someone's out capping off a few rounds. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with deer calls. I don't know if I need others. I mean, I know that there are deer, there are uh, <clears throat> doe bleats that I could have. Maybe I'll look into getting one of those. Maybe you guys can tell me what you think, if I really need that, or, or do I have enough? Now, the only other thing I don't have in here yet is scent control. So obviously, I'm going to have some spray uh, to spray myself down with. Um, I'll probably have something um, in the pack, and then maybe a scent lure of some type, uh, some deer estrus, something like that. I need to look into that, study that a little bit more. Comments are welcome. But that's it. <clears throat> this is the brunt of the gear that I'm going to take, of, of, except, of course, my rifle and ammunition and magazine. Uh, and then, of course, my clothes, but it's pretty much it. Um, I've got enough room in the pack to add stuff if I need to. I can add gloves, hat, uh, another layer. I can add food for the day, my lunch, um, probably some energy bars, things like that. Uh, there's still plenty of room with everything packed in here. And then the last thing that I forgot to mention that I did get, and I'm going to try, is this uh, shooting stick. So I figured with a rifle, um, this would be a good thing to have uh, for spot and stock type hunting. Um, this is by Allen. Um, has a nice foam grip to it. Of course, the rest here for the rifle. And then this thing telescopes out. Um, pretty tall, actually. Some of these I've seen are pretty cheap. They've, there's a couple of them at Walmart that are just look like junk, and uh, they didn't really go that far. This one, um, this thing's like a, a walking stick. I mean, this is you could use this for a hiking pole. It's, it's aluminum. Um, it has good locks. It seems to be fairly quiet when deploying it uh, and it's going to fit right on the side pouch on the other pocket of my pack so if I need it I've got it um, it didn't cost me a ton of money I think it was under $20 um, I think I got it at Meyer, something like that one of the big box stores I'm sure you can get it online um, but I liked it um, because I thought it was a decent one. I know there's more expensive ones out there that with more features, but I think for me as a beginner, I'll try this and see how this works. And I'll obviously use this uh, before hunting season and test it out. Nope. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Um, I'm really serious when I say, if you guys want to leave comments, uh, please do. I mean, be gentle. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm new at deer hunting and, uh, you know, I'm really trying to figure this whole thing out because it, it, it's a very complex process. I mean, obviously you can just grab a gun and hit the woods with very little gear. Um, but my hunting in Pennsylvania is going to be a little bit different than Ohio. Like I said, it's on national forest. It's going to be out longer during the day. There's not going to be the ability to go back to the truck and, and take a nap and have lunch. Um, it's going to be out all day in the woods. A lot of hiking, I think. A lot of ground to cover, possibly. Um, <clears throat> so I needed something that's going to sustain me. And this gear, is, I think, is going to do that. Um, and then coming back to Ohio, hunting in Ohio, it's a little bit different. It's, it's going to be public hunting land. Um, you know, probably not as long out. Um, not along a hike in the public hunting lands. You can park your truck and walk a couple hundred yards and you're in the woods or on the edge of a field to start shooting. So it's probably setting up in a spot <clears throat> um, and then hunting that way. All right, guys, as always, like, subscribe, share, hit that bell icon so you get notifications. Please check out my social media, Facebook group. Join that. Go to Instagram. Check me out there. Uh, check out the Amazon affiliate uh, store. And if you got to do some shopping, go through the store. Uh, that helps me out a little bit. As always, thank you for watching my videos. And we will see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.